welcome brothers and sisters to our devotional hour this morning. Happy to have you joining us. It's our third morning of our fasting. We trust that everyone has been having a intimate time with the Lord Jesus. And uh, I trust that our spiritual lives are ascending to new heights and our roots are being dug deeper as we dwell by the rivers of water. Because the blessed man is the man that Walk it not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit it in the seat of the scornful, nor stand it in the ways of sinners, but his delight is in the word of the Lord, and in them doth he meditate day and night. Such a one shall be like the tree planted. Not just a coincidence or an occurrence, but planted, purposefully and intentionally planted. Brothers and sisters, the grace of God that came into our lives and planted us by this river, it was not coincidental or incidental. It was intentionally and purposefully. We were intentionally and purposefully planted by the rivers of water. And so we bear a fruit in our season. Everyone have a season to bear. And sometimes you may look across at another tree bearing their fruit. And wonder what's happening with you. You just keep planted by the rivers of water. Because your season to bear will come. Because every tree bears in different season. You see, if every tree bared and brought forth fruit in the same season, then there would be starvation after the crop is over. When my tree is bearing fruit, you can eat from my tree, and when your tree is bearing fruit, I can eat from your tree. And God has so structured the church that we are interdependent, not independent, in a way that we are interconnected and interrelated. So may we connect in the spirit this morning and allow the grace of God to bring forth the fruit, the fruits and the crop from the tree of his choice. And wherever we see that fruit bearing, don't be afraid to go and partake. In the kingdom of God, we don't fence up our trees. We leave it so we can share our fruit. So the Lord bless you this morning. I'm going to sing you a song. Verse 75. It is well with my soul. When peace like a river attended my way. When Sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Whatever you're going through this morning, brothers and sisters, maybe it is not well with your finances because you have lost your job. Maybe it's not well with your health. 
because the anxieties and fears have started to create panic attacks and anxieties. Maybe it's not well in your home and in your marriage. But if you can this morning lift up your heart and say it is well with my soul, then brothers and sisters, you can rejoice in the Lord. Maybe you can't rejoice in your financial state at this time. Maybe you can't rejoice in the state of your health, but rejoice in the Lord because it is well with your soul. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast thought me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials may come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well, it is well, with my soul, my soul, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sins not in part, but in whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul, and Lord, the day when the fate shall be sighed, the clouds shall roll back as a scroll, the storm shall resound, and the Lord shall descend, even so. It is well with my 
peace with God, that all the transgression that you have committed against God has been forgiven, and you are now free. See, those who are driving around with a whole lot of unpaid tickets, transgress the laws of the land and have been a repeated offender and you're driving around with a whole lot of traffic tickets. You don't drive comfortable on the road because you fear any moment you could be stopped by a policeman or a policewoman and you know you'll be in trouble with the state. But it's such a peace when you're pulled over by the police, when you know that your record is clear and there's no criminal record on the books because you went to the court and you asked the judge for mercy. And the judge wiped your record clear. You couldn't pay the fine, but he writes your record clear. So when you pull up, that police officer cannot hold no charge against you, even though you paid no money. Your record is clear. Hallelujah. It is well. When the officer pull you over, you can say, Officer, it is well. Thank God it is well with my soul. I want to encourage those this morning. Your soul is filled with guilt. Your soul is in trouble with God. Make it right with God, even now, right now. You can make a decision and repent of your sins and decide to make an about turn. Even right now, you can bow your heads to the judge of all flesh and says, Lord Jesus, I'm in trouble with you. My sins and transgressions are many. And only through your blood can I have forgiveness. Help me, Lord. If you repent right now, the Lord will forgive you. And if you find a place that can baptize you in the name of Jesus, all your sins will be washed away. The Lord bless you. Let us pray. So we pray today that the hearts of men will be convicted, that they will be reconciled to God, that we, the church of the living God, in this moment of chaos, when the traffic lights are out and there is chaos at the intersection, chaos at the crossroads of life, that we will step out and begin to direct the traffic. Hallelujah. There is a void right now in the world. The rulers and the kings and prime ministers of the world, 
They are in chaos. The mighty America is right now bowing on its knees in this moment of crisis. There is chaos and there is a void. May the church step into that void and begin to give a voice in the midst of the chaos to give direction. May we not allow some diabolic force to fill that void and to begin misdirecting the souls of men. But may the church be strategically positioned to deal with the crisis of the hour and to direct the hearts of men. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, Lord. We look to you, Almighty God, the God of the heaven and the earth. We bless your name and we worship you this morning. There is none beside you. You are God and God alone. You are the Savior. And we come to you, Lord, recognizing that you are the Savior, and we put in your hands, Lord, the sinners who need a Savior. In this moment, Lord, of crisis and grief, we pray in the name of Jesus that the conviction of the Holy Spirit will be upon the souls of men. Lord, empower your people. Empower the church, O oh God, in this hour. O oh Lord Jesus, may we be, Lord God, an oracle and a mouthpiece for you in this hour. In the name of Jesus, may you confirm the words of your people with signs following. Work with us, O oh God. Work with us, we pray. Work with us as we work with you, Lord. As laborers together, let grace abound, let grace abound, let grace abound upon your people. Through our communities, oh God, let grace abound. Wherever your name is being proclaimed, Lord, and power God, your ministers. Oh God, empower those who bring the glad tidings of the gospel. And let grace abound in this moment, dear God. Let grace abound in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Oh God, we put all the requests before you this morning. Those right now that are per team will name individually in the name of Jesus. Send help from your sanctuary. Send healing and deliverance. Oh God, send a miracle, we pray, to those who are in need. We look to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. We all say amen and we glorify him. We worship him, we honor his name. He is good and his mercies endure it forever. May the grace of God be upon you all. I'd like to share a word with you this morning. We are going to go to the book of Numbers chapter 21. I did make mention of it in a broadcast some time ago, but I want to revisit it this morning. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 21, verse 5. And the people spake against God, and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? 
for there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathed this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. And much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, when he looketh upon it, he shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if any bitten by a serpent, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Hallelujah. They lived when they looked at the serpent. I want to exchange a few thoughts with you, brothers and sisters. But people murmured against God. They had bread. They were being fed. But they were not contented. They were not contented. We as the people of God, we've got to learn contentment. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. We must know what to be contented with and what to be discontented with. You see, we become discontented with our material things so easily. But the spiritual things of life, we become contented with just a little. We must get discontented with our spiritual state and yearn for God as the heart panted after the water books. But the temporary things of life, we must be contented as God brings them into our borders. We don't have to go chasing after them. Because in chasing after these material things, Solomon says it's like chasing the wind. And if we go chasing after these things, then we're going to begin to get driven. We're going to begin to be driven by the hunger and the thirst for success as it is defined by the world. We're going to begin to be driven by the desire for prosperity as it is de defined by the world. Hallelujah. May our souls prosper. Hallelujah. Let us learn, brothers and sisters, not to be murmurers and complainers, but to be those who are thankful for what God brings into our borders. And as we become thankful and appreciate what God is doing, He will extend our borders. He will extend our borders. For promotion cometh not from the east, nor from the west, neither from the south. You got to look north. Lift up your eyes to the hills. 
and the blessings of the Lord make it rich, but it brings no sorrow with it. When we chase after the things of the world and accumulate all these material things, it brings a level of anxiety and fear with it. But when God bless you, it brings peace and you can enjoy what God brings into your borders. The people of Israel, they murmured. You see, when you're a child of God and you begin to murmur, you're murmuring against God. Saying, God, what is happening to me? No, go down on your knees and talk to God about it. Don't murmur to other people. As a child of God, every time you murmur to a sinner, Oh my God, you are doing despite to the name of Jesus. If you go complaining to sinners, they're going to wonder where is your God? What's the use of your faith? Why should I come and join you if every day you are murmuring even more than I am doing? Why not be thankful and be grateful in everything give thanks? For this is the will of God concerning us. Because of their murmuring, fiery serpents broke out among them. And the people came to Moses and said, Intercede for me, Moses. Pray unto the Lord that he take away this plague that is among us. And the Lord commanded Moses to make a fiery serpent and to set it upon a pole. And the serpent was made of brass. Brass in the scriptures is symbolic of judgment. And he hung it on a pole. And he went throughout the camp and says, Look and live. Said if you'll be bitten, just look at the serpent on the pole and live. Amen. I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, if you get bitten by this virus, just look to the pole. Jesus said, as Moses was lifted up in the wilderness. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. This spake he of his crucifixion, of his death. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. If you get bitten by this virus, look to the Lamb of God. But there is healing in a look at the cross. You see, Jesus identified himself with the serpent in the wilderness because he became sin for us. That virus of sin that has infected humanity and was being passed down from generation to generation to provide an antibody and to provide an antidote. God came to earth in the form of a man. He became like sinful man. Yet remaining sinless. But the likeness of sinful man he took unto himself. Moses was told make a serpent just like the one that is biting the people. Jesus became sin for us. And they hung him up on a pole. 
And today he say, if you are beaten by sin, if the virus of sin is causing you not to be able to breathe properly, is stifling and suffocating the life out of your soul. He said, look and live. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Brothers and sisters, there is a remedy. There is an antidote for sin. There is a remedy for the coronavirus. Look and live. Only a look can make a difference in our circumstances. Hallelujah. See, Jesus partake of human substance and human blood. And when the blood of Jesus gets into your spirit and soul, it comes with the antibody for sin. It will cause the power of sin to be broken. And sin will no longer have dominion over you. Because of the power of the blood of Jesus. So today, we look to the Lamb of God. If you from sin are longing to be free, look to the Lamb of God. If you are sick today and need healing, there is healing in his wings. For he was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, by looking to that sin bearer on the cross, we can be free from sin and sickness. Hallelujah. Only a look. The Lord bless you. Let me see if I can find that song in my playlist. Hallelujah. Because I want us to look to the Lamb of God today. Hallelujah. Give God praise somebody. Hallelujah. He is good and his mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. Let's see if this is it. power it still works today and if you take a look at Calvary your life will never be the same again Lord I pray for those who are not saved this morning in the name of Jesus I pray that their eyes will be lifted to Calvary they will realize oh God the tragedy of sin Oh God, the consequence of sin brought you to such a debt. They will repent, Lord. Because if your blood is not applied to our hearts, it will be upon our head on that great judgment day. Bless your people now, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it was good having you. I'll be back at 2 p.m. And 
at 2 p.m. I'll give some directions concerning our activities tomorrow and how we proceed. Our fasting ends this evening, but tomorrow is Sunday, and those who feel led to continue into tomorrow, you can do so. There are those of us who will continue. Amen. And continue to seek the Lord. If you are listening to this broadcast and you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus, you send us a message. We'll baptize you in the name of the Lord. If you want to be saved but you need further instruction, you send us a message. We will study with you. Amen. We have a personal Bible study ministry where we will come into your homes or at of a place of convenience and we will rightly divide the word of truth with you. Get your concerns and questions addressed and prepare your hearts for the spirit of Jesus Christ. So God bless you. See you this evening and enjoy Amen.